Hello, everyone. Once again, James Green with EFI. Um, I want to share um, this with the uh, those who who work on fire rate controllers out in the field, uh, technicians, analysts, those who might be responsible for break fix. Um, as I've worked in the field for many years, you know one of the common struggles that I've seen recently um, related to the fire rate controllers is. Uh, really, you know, it used to be analysts dealt with fiery controllers and the analysts are being pulled more and more into the sales channel. And so the OENS is falling on the technicians to do all the fiery support. And a lot of the technicians didn't get the same kind of training uh, that analysts got and didn't have the same exposure to fiery. So it's been, you know, kind of a, a struggle. Um, the other struggle that I've seen is that um, our partners really don't understand how the support is structured. So when a partner buys a fiery controller, they buy it at a, a negotiated transfer cost. And uh, that cost is set up based on how the partner, and let's just use anybody as an example, Konica, Xerox, Sharp, Rico, um, Canon, uh, what they want to be able to provide to their customer as a, um, as a support mechanism. So we have fiery technical support, but those guys are giving technical support to the OEM second level or third level guys, not directly to the field technicians, unless you are fiery tech certified or you're a fiery expert. Then those two individuals can call fiery direct. Uh, even if a customer was fiery expert certified, they could call direct. But in most cases, you don't have that. So um, to get fiery support, if you're a technician and you're not fiery tech certified or you're not fiery expert, you would follow this uh, escalation procedure that I'm going to share with you. So it really starts here. First of all, where are my troubleshooting resources? I'm in front of a fiery. I'm not sure where to start. Well, if you're not a member of EFI communities, which is free, you really should be. Why? Because this is a community of fiery users all across the globe that are sharing comments and ideas, uh, problems and resolutions. Uh, this is also monitored by the technical sales specialists, by the sales development managers, and more importantly, it's monitored by our EFI fiery support uh, personnel. So if you post a question about something, you're going to get a response from someone on EFI communities, but in all likelihood, an EFI support person is the one who's going to be answering you. Uh, your other tools are in the sales portal, and I know it sounds bizarre to have a sales tool, or excuse me, a technical tool in the sales portal, but this is really our old partner portal, and we changed the name for a number of reasons, but if you don't have access to the sales portal, you really need to get yourself access to this, because in there we have a, a portion that's uh, called uh, Tech Analyst Corner, Service Tech Analyst Corner, I believe. And we are posting things like hardware diagnostic images, service guides, tech tickers, um, a bunch of different ways for you to get the support tools that you need when supporting a fiery. One of the things that's included in there is this first aid guide. All right, the first aid guide was put together as a ABCs to how to troubleshoot a fiery. What means what? When you get this message, what does it mean? Where do I do? Where do I start? The other troubleshooting tools you have is your local fiery expert. Hopefully you guys have someone who's fiery expert certified or you have a fiery tech certified person. And then from there you have your OEM second level support. And then finally you can engage your EFI TSS understanding that your TSS really reports to sales. His job as a technical sales specialist isn't technical. It's technical in how do we sell fireys and how do we help our OEMs understand the technology and how to sell the fiery and the solutions. They are technical in nature, so they can help you in some cases, but they're not readily available because they're not a support staff. They do report to sales. So with that said, how can this whole process work together to get a fiery problem escalated to get it resolved quick? Well, it looks like this. It starts with the fiery, uh, the field service tech being dispatched out to a service call. Somewhere in the process, you determine that fiery uh, controller might be contributing to the problem. Um, you should follow these tools, right? Use your EFI Communities Tech Ticker Sales Portal First Aid Guide to try to resolve the issue. All right, then you get to a decision tree. 
Is the problem been solved, yes or no? Well, if it's yes, you move on. If it's no, this is where you want to engage your local fiery expert. Either fiery tech certified individual or fiery expert. You guys troubleshoot together. You come to a decision tree. Is the problem been solved, yes or no? If it's yes, you move on. If it's no, this is where you're going to want to open up a case in EFI communities. Now, uh, I mentioned EFI communities as a place to go look for information and ask questions. However, uh, if you want to get a EFI support engineer involved, you can actually open a case and it will be assigned to an EFI engineer to work with you on this problem. The issue is, is you cannot do that unless you're fiery expert certified or fiery tech certified. So um, once you open up a case, it will be assigned to a second level EFI engineer. But what we're asking you to also do at the same time is let's have a closed loop here. We also want you to open up a ticket, a second level ticket with your OEM. So if you're Canon, if you're KM, if you're Xerox, um, whoever I might have missed, Rico. And there's a reason for this. Our EFI second level engineer can work this case, but if, you have, if you've also opened up a ticket with your OEM, now they will have a two-way communication in case it involves not just the Fiery, but some firmware or a patch that needs to be written because EFI cannot write a patch to solve a fiery problem without the OEM's approval. And if we don't open up the ticket initially, we're just going to have to go back through the process to open up a ticket and start all over just so they can give us approval to write a patch. So at the same time that you do open up a case in EFI communities and you've opened up a second level ticket with your OEM, you could reach out to your local TSS because a ticket was generated. And you want to get that ticket information to your TSS. Why? So that he will take that information, filter it back over to the second level engineer just to let them know, hey, the local guy called me and told me about the problem. I understand you're working on it or you have a ticket. I also have a, a OEM ticket on this just so you can look at what they're doing about the problem so that you guys can collaborate. So while it looks a little convoluted, it actually does work. And case in point is whenever you skip this process, your problems go on for a long period of time with no resolution. When you follow this process, we get to a quicker resolution because everybody's involved, everybody's talking, and we have the right people involved to help solve the problem. God forbid it does require some kind of patch. If we skip any part of this process, especially this part right here, not opening up a second level ticket with your OEM, the patch will never be approved because the second level OEM doesn't approve it and Fiery doesn't approve it. The third level in Japan or wherever the manufacturer is located is the one who has to approve the patch. And they will not approve it unless it's been validated by a second or third level uh, individual in their OEM channel. So this is the, the proper way to get a Fiery call escalated. And while I understand that sometimes the second level OEM personnel is not readily available, it's a lot of back and forth and phone calls and emails and you know what have you, it is a necessary evil. It's the way the OEMs want the escalation process to work. And when followed, it does work. So that's really what I wanted to cover. Uh, if you ever have any questions about this or need any help being guided through there, please don't hesitate to let me know. Thanks, guys. Take care.